On the 15th of March 2020, there was a massive explosion at the Abuliado area of Lagos, which led to the collapse of many structures in the area. That's according to the Catholic Archbishop of Lagos, Archdiocese, Most Reverend Alfred Martins. He further said that the pipeline going through the community was involved as well as a, also a stack of gas um, cylinders. According to the Lagos Coordinator, the Acting Coordinator, Lagos Territory Office, National Emergency uh, Management Agency, that's Mr. Ibrahim Farinway, said there was a pressure exerted on the pipeline by the Tipa Ladin granite, with Ladin with granite, I beg your pardon, caused the explosion. Farinway further stated that when the pressure became too much, the pipeline forced itself out to escape and there was, and that was why the sky was filled with gray smoke that led to the explosion before the fire. It was reported that about 50 houses, including the Bethlehem, Bethlehem School, and about 60 students, uh, 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 50 houses were damaged, about 60 students were injured, no student died, but the principal of that school and uh, a number of people died in that um, incident. Good afternoon, viewers, and welcome to the Property Show. My name is Najib Adeyemi. Today, we are going to be looking at the uh, explosion at Abuliadu area of Lagos State, which um, involved destruction of many um, properties and a few lives also were lost, particularly the case of the principal of that school who was trying to I think about two, two, two staff of that school, and it was reported that the principal was trying to save the lives of the students. Um, also, uh, a couple and their two sons were also died, also died in that uh, incident. Before we go ahead on the show today, our thoughts and prayers are with all the victims of that incident. We pray that God in his infinite mercy fortify them and also replenish all their lost properties um, in manifold. Today on the show, we are going to be looking at the effects of, the, of this particular incident with particular reference to uh, on, 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 on the properties around that area, that area, not only for, to, for the purpose of today, but also um, in the future. Because some of these properties in the nearest future may not be able to stand integrity test anymore. The report also reaching us is that most of the, most of the properties on these axes were built on the right of way of the NMPC gas line. Also, the FHA have also claimed that that, that, that area is also part of the FESTA extension which uh, the federal government have set aside to build um, government-owned houses. Today um, on the show, we have a guest, a professional par excellence, who is going to uh, uh, demystify this topic with me in the studio. Um, our guest today is ESV Ni Olagoke. Good afternoon, sir, and thank you so much for joining us. Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to be here today. All right, sir. Um, ESV Ni Olagoke is the uh, head of practice, Ni Olagoke Consulting. Okay, we'll go on a very short break right now. When we come back, we'll move straight into the show proper. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Good afternoon, VAG viewers. You're still watching the Property Show live on Galaxy Television, and we're still discussing the cause and effect of the Abuliado explosion in Lagos State on the 15th of March, 2020. 
Uh, to join us on the, uh, uh, in this discussion, don't forget you can send your WhatsApp and text messages to plus through two three four eight zero three four one four two six one one. You can also send us um, Instagram messages, Facebook on Instagram. We are at the property underscore show. Facebook at the property show one. You can also send us emails, the property show ng at gmail dot com. Um, now we'll go straight into the discussion of the day. Um, there have been different reports. You know, as per the course of this uh, explosion, I think I read um, that of the Catholic Church and also that of NEMA, and I think Lasema is also saying that legal state should try and investigate further as to the causes. And there are some people also playing some 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 kind of politics that this is actually uh, 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 insurgents, uh, you know, coming into legal state. And I even saw a picture of something that looks like an explosive. Uh, online. So all of these have been the reactions of people regarding this. What's, uh, with the report so far, what do you think were the causes? Are, are, are these causes from the reports we are getting, are they genuine enough to say yes, these are the causes? Good afternoon once again. And uh, let me quickly say this on behalf of Lagos State, of Nigerian institution of SSA and Valua. Our hearts also goes to the families that lost their, lost their loved one, uh, the unfortunate events and also to Lagos State government. The question you just asked, we've not been there as an individual, I've not been there, and our institution, we've not been there as well. But from the information that reached us, it was caused by a vehicle trying to maneuver or try to lose, uh, that lost control in that particular axis. But there were other information that was caused by FANDA. So until Lagos State come up with the results of the investigation. investigation. We cannot really ascertain because it has become a regular occurrence in Lagos State that when anytime you hear about uh, pipeline explosion, it's always going by funders. Hmm. So we really need to investigate, not only for investigating purpose, but to curb future, future occurrences. These have been happening. We have Abuli Egba last year, even early this year. It's now Abul uh, Abul So there's need to for Lagos State government, they are the authority in charge to really investigate so as to know what to do to curb future occurrences. Thank you. Okay. Um you'd agree with me that whether or not uh, the properties in these areas are in, in the right place in the first place. The the point is that it's there's what we can establish is that there is a right there is a gas pipeline in that act which belongs to NNPC. And I also read a report that says that uh, uh, the boss of NNPC was at the site and was able to confirm that it was, that there's a gas explosion in that act. Maybe as a result of the fire, then it's, you know, found its way into the uh, gas pipelines and that was how, and that um, um, aided the, 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 the occurrence, that's the explosion. Okay, um, what do you think should have been done from day one in terms of planning regulation in this area? Yeah, thank you very much. You, we need to ascertain. Uh, from what you said, there are building developing in that area yes. that are built on the right of your NNPC. So we really need to ascertain from the studies. We I learned that you NNPC ought to give about uh, 25 to 30 meters, meters away as their own setback before any development can take place okay. in that particular axis. So we need to ascertain whether that was properly done by an NPC hmm. before we can now uh, claim that uh, someone has uh, encroached, encroached the, part, the, 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 the NPC right of way. Then FHA, Federal Housing Authority, for what we also gathered was that the, the, that particular area, in fact, federal government acquired large expanse of land. Some have for military, okay. which they use. And you know, when w w one thing about federal government is each time there's change in government, mm -hmm. you discover that a project can always be abandoned. abandoned. And nobody will visit it. Not only the federal, even the states. Aha. Uh -huh. Because I couldn't imagine our, our first tax that been on ground since 1970, 77, yes. or thereabouts. And this is over 40 years after nothing has been done, been done to that particular area. And the land is just lying following. Nobody, I learned part of a. Uh, Trade fear, international yeah. trade fear is also part of part the of land it. which exactly. they acquire to 
for that particular purpose. So the rest of the land, we just having it lying fallow. Nobody is touching it. Nothing is happening. And you know this, Omonile, uh, Lagos State land here. Our own fuel in Lagos, as far as Lagos State is concerned, is uh, it's land. Land. <laughs> so Omonile, we always look at it that this thing is wasting. Mm -hmm. What could we do? Let us expose it so that we can get some income for themselves. That was it. So we didn't need, we need to have that thing. If truly this land is under FHA, they are supposed to be even investigate that. Have they uh, ceded land to someone else? Exactly. As authority, uh, no, uh, have they forgotten about the proposed project that the land meant for? Mm -hmm. After that one, we're not asserting. Who are those people that are selling this land mm -hmm. to, the, to the individual? Because mm -hmm. it's very, very important. You know, they, they, what, what, I discovered, what I discovered about that public about their communities that people don't have information, ignorance every day. Instead of asking questions, you have a parcel of land, you just go there, give someone money, and maybe the land is cheap or what have you, and you start building. You need to, there's always need to investigate, ask for that question. You see a land been there at this age in Lagos State, hmm. and the land has been there over the period of time, <laughs> you didn't ask questions that, why is this property there? Hmm. Anytime we have property for sale or for lease, hmm. the first question we ask is, how long has this property been, been there. In, the, in, the, in, the, in the market? Mm. If it has been there for a year, then we need to ask for that question. What happened? Was there conflict of interest on the property or what's the issue? Mm. We really need to investigate before we can introduce such property to our client. So those are the questions, those are the things we really need to, really need to uh, uh, unfold. We need to let people know. But I think the, the, the government really need to rise up to this occasion. When you have land, is it that you ask the community, oh yeah, we are not using it again, we release it back to you. Mm -hmm. Or call on the private developers mm -hmm. to come and go into joint venture with exactly. you. And you ask the, development, mm -hmm. inside of our property, line value. And through that, proper planning mm -hmm. will be put in place before such development uh, take place. I could just imagine if I'm a developer and I have 100 acres of land to be developed. Mm. I'll pass through necessary authority exactly. to make sure that uh, all necessary documents are taken and also to make sure that the government agency faces such land, not because of today, to, to cough future occurrences, which we just expressed uh, last week. It's unavoidable. Mm. We can definitely, uh, uh, I mean, it's something that is avoidable. It's avoidable exactly. Sorry. But exactly. because of the negligence on the part of the government mm. and the individual ignorance, mm. we don't ask questions that what has really happened. But what you said about the, it will definitely affect the value of property exactly. in that particular environment. Because one, it has happened now, I'm very sure that a lot of people, uh, they, 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 they want, scared. Yeah, be scared of going to that particular area. Ah, come to Abu Lehadu. The first thing that rings your mind is where it's supposed to take place. I don't want to build a house <laughs> or live in, a, in, a, in, a, in an environment where I will sleep with one eyes closed and the other one, the one open. So that's the first thing that is going to affect that particular environment, which no doubt we, we, no, nobody is going to dispose to that. Because people will not, but one good thing is that people will not be conscious now of exactly. where and where to buy. And that's why the government, government agency need to create more awareness. Mm. If the uh, coronavirus, exactly. the way the awareness has gone, has gone around, uh, in all social media, time. everywhere, in fact, small children, they are aware of there's something <laughs> coronavirus. If government also can go in that way, let there be proper awareness on uh, uh, development, especially in Lagos State. What are those things people need to look out for? Mm. Look out for area where we have pipeline gas line very very important yes when you look at there's always demarcation small box exactly. like a small house that will show you that something is here some people might have seen that and think it's just a decoration hmm. exactly yeah. some some will even really don't dig don't dig deep or something yeah. gas line i uh have -huh. so know. but we have some on the surface we have underground, underground. and most yeah. time we have we have different signs, but people see it it back back to awareness education hmm. people need to be educated hmm. so that each time they see such sign they ask more questions. Mm -hmm. Ah, what's this thing for? When the person you are asking doesn't know anything about it, mm -hmm. it's easier for you to go on your home. And it, the internet now on the go. So we, it, one good thing is that it's not, people will now be more conscious of it. But I think government need to do more on or they are giving people education about it. And also the professionals. That's where those of all in the beach industry 
They are coming in. Exactly. Before I go in, in the case of um, um, the issue of professionals, we, from what we have now, from the report we have now, we know that there are some contraventions by the people who are built on that access. Number one, the right of we just like you just said of NNPC. Number two, the FHA has something to do in that area, which we know that is first stack extension. And and I'm I'm aware that some people are saying that they should that the legal state government okay, I learned that the NNPC road they are trying to clear the right of way and legal state government should not uh, uh, should revoke the CFO. Now the question is who are those that have provided a CFO for a place that is meant to be under government acquisition, right? Those are some of the questions that come up. So if these things are actually, th actually true, some people must have, might, might have sabotaged the efforts of the government because the, plans, the plan is there for FHA, uh, for FHA, you know, so something must be wrong somewhere. What do you think should be the consequences for those? Because I think legal should dig deep and also even at the federal level. What do you think should be the consequences for those who might have done this harm within the government? Um, yeah, the first thing we need to ascertain is how many developments in that area are having a bu approved building plan. Hmm. So that's the first thing, because I know at one, one, one fortunate thing or unfortunate thing for those people is that governments will not compensate properties without, that, without title. title. That's one unfortunate thing about them. They've bought for Monile, or Monile might have given them receipts and survey. Fine. Maybe, maybe but, they did an assignment. Aha, uh -huh, did an assignment, <laughs> not registered. Contract but until yeah. government give you his own CFO, uh, registered it of assignment, or what have you, there's no claim hmm. for these people. So hmm. mo why we, we, government just need to investigate. But I can assure you that about 90% of development in that, that area, area has no, no title. title. Right then. Let's so, go straight. No, but the, the, you know, plan authority always go there. Most time when they go, they just call them, and that's where corruption comes in. <laughs> Don't let us discuss about that one today. <laughs> All right, then. so let's go straight to the roles of professionals in this whole thing. You have talked about so much. You talked about so much on government, government um, yes. um, rules in, uh, uh, in awareness. But there's one other rule of government I want us to talk about, and that is carrying out integrity tests on these properties, not for now, but for the future. We have so many building collapse right now. We can only always say that yes, materials are bad, you know, workmanship. But we are not talking about what would have been the effects of some of these explosions underground, you know. So, but let's leave that now. Let, let, let us take the rules of professionals in this case. Yeah, qu qu quickly, before I answer that, integrity, integrity grade is very, very test. It's very, very important for the government. Hmm. Even now that you want to compensate some people, I learned government, they want to source for about two billion yes, to, to compensate people that are property really, and really fund. Really fund. But the, 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 why they are doing that, they need to carry out integrity test because don't go and uh, compensate someone that is probably will collapse tomorrow, tomorrow or after tomorrow. So there's no doubt about that. Government must do that. They All must right. do that very well. All right. Role of professionals. We have a lot of roles to perform in the society. We're just quite unfortunate that uh, you see that people are not conscious of what or they are not even aware of our role. We have all the bits, like I said, we have all the professionals in the building industry. The estates of and valuers, we have, the, the, uh, uh, we have architects, we have land surveyor, we have town planners, we have the engineers, builders. Let me put them together, the engineers. The, when you acquire your, la your land, your, it's part of our role as an estate of valor to look for a land for you. And I'm going to tell you that no professional, no estate of valor that is, being, that is trained, that will go and uh, take his client to a land that is very close to pipeline or gas line. That's, nice. That's one thing. Why you never want to acquire land for our, property, for our clients, the first thing we do is we visit the subordinate's office yes. to go and confirm whether the land is under position That's or not. That's to charge the land. Charge the land. That's the first thing. And after that one, with the, the, if the land is free, that we, we've confirmed it, no appropriations, then we, can advi we advise our clients to buy, hmm. to purchase. And that's the, the next thing, the next set of professionals that work then are the, the town planners. Mm -hmm. the, the town planners, they have to make sure that we each neighborhood has their use. That's mm -hmm. the first thing. Yeah. We have agricultural land, residential land, land, industrial land, and so on and so forth. Residential, so commercial. It's the function of the town planners to look at it that the construction to be taking place, the development to be taking place in that area, is it in conformity to the use? 
You cannot just go and take agricultural land and start your industrial land. No. Exactly. So the planter planner needs to go there, and they are also to supervise when mm. development is going on to mm. make sure that right of way, the particular setbacks, yes, so your building before you can start your set six meters from the middle of from the, the, the middle of the road. You, that one is important. If when you want to build on that land, you are having six hundred and forty square meter land. Mm. You know that the development percentage is forty percent. Mm. 40%, that's the, your beach up area exactly. should be. Then the rest will be for green area, another, another thing. Mm. So they are there. And when development is coming in, then we have the architect. Yeah. The architect wants to look at your, your uh, building plan, your factory plan, make sure your, you want to get your building plan, and they come up with, their, with the design. Yeah, design. And while they are doing that one, they also go back to the government exactly. to make sure that is there an area that is being restricted? There's mm. some property that are close to the airport, hmm. the maximum height you can go is three floors. Yes. Maybe some four, but hmm. maximum four floors. Hmm. So the, archi the, the function of the architect to quickly visit the regulating office hmm. at the, the government one. to make sure that, oh, this planning, the Anita Planning Authority, yes. I, I mean the, the Minister of uh, planning, planning, in, in planning. Each, yeah, physical planning in each state, to quickly go there and make sure that the development is in conformity. Hmm. Also, to make sure that uh, unnecessary consideration is being put before such a building Standards. can be approved. And then, there, after that one, the users. Mm -hmm. We SSO and Valor, we also involved during the development. Mm -hmm. What do we do? We want to make sure that after the property has been built, either for your investment purpose or the owner wants to stay there, we want to manage the property. Mm -hmm. And that comes to the usage. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that there's proper drainage. Mm -hmm. Property should be the, your, your your drain should be channeled either to the main drain provided by the government or to your soke mm -hmm. So we is also a function to make sure that this has been put in place. So the 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 all the professionals mm -hmm. in the built environment. environment, it is their responsibilities to be up and doing whenever there is development in any area, especially in Lagos State that we are. Mm. So it is a is a is a, is a call is a is a kind of call up is is a, is a, a challenge. Let me call it a challenge for all, every one of us mm. because we cannot close our eyes that we are not seeing what is going on in the environment in Lagos State usage all this. But it's now for us to rise up. We need to make the government we need to lay hands with the government have a synergy with them. We need to interface with them. Mm. By the time they are, they, they are to make laws, mm. enforce it. But us is to create awareness. To the general public, make sure that uh, awareness through our clients, through our members. Like Lagos State now, we are having about six thousand uh, members in Lagos State. So if you could start with a member, we create awareness within them. Each of us, we have clients that we service. Mm. We also extend it to our clients, and mm. from them, I'm very sure that uh, most part of uh, negotiation will be informed, and they will be brief. They, in fact, they will have information mm. about usage of land. From time to time, before they go into yes. development. No, all right, that is a very robust one. But very quickly, I think we have less than five minutes. But I just want your thoughts um, in terms of you explain that SSOVs yes and values are also involved during the development stage yes. to ensure that uh, you know it's being built for proper management. In cases like this, what do you think should be the consideration for building materials in areas of explosion? And uh, you know, after carrying out your chatting, you know, this place can be good for agricultural or something or there is a gas pipeline here so, so what's what implication would that have on your choice of building materials you know the it is very very important but most times when you look at the i cannot see the learned person i cannot see someone that is living above average mm -hmm. that will not want to build a house that the property that the document will not be registered exactly. to start with to confirm ownership mm -hmm. you want to make sure that this document the area is being approved Mm. And that now leads to the kind of proper uh, the materials you want to be. I tell people, the money you want to build a house, not the money you want to use to heat. Exactly. You understand? But you, you, we, we have to be very careful about the materials that we use. Can they uh, withstand external pressure, natural mm. currency? Mm. We're talking of weather. Now we are having change in climate. Uh, um, climate. Change in climate. So you have to be careful that whether these, the materials you want to use can really, really withstand such mm. fire. Hmm. And that's why people are now using, most times we don't have flush door the way you have in the past, in the panel door. We have more security door, we exactly. have more bullet, uh, bulletproof door now that people are using that can resist fire. Even the house, we are now happy people that we are using. In those days, we have more of emotional paint. We hmm. now have people using, though it generates heat. Yeah. But glossy, we have gloss paints now that can quickly resist fire. Hmm. Even the, the 
and roofing materials. Hmm. This lost pan, small fire can quickly devour, destroy, destroy it. it. And that's why I mean, we have coated lost pan. Yes. Uh, people call it Gerard. Yeah. They are also lost pan, but being coated. Coated, hmm. it says that it's not something that fire can quickly uh, attack. destroy, attract, and destroy. And that's why that's what people are doing now. So the choice of your, you know, you look at your environment, even when you are building in a place that's not close to a pipeline or, or fire line, the first thing that comes to your mind is present, preventive measure. Hmm. This house I want to build, I want to construct, can it withstand any external pressure, be it rain, weather, fire, or another All right, very quickly, what would be your last word for legal states and the users of that uh, environment? We have just less than two minutes. Yo, okay. Legal state governments, I just want us, I just, I, my advice to legal state is that they need to, there should be more education, awareness for the general public. Let them know the danger of building close to Kana, because we are going to rainy season very soon, close to pipeline and also, and, or, or, and also to close to gas line. It's very, very important for Lagos State to increase their awareness and to make sure that anybody that go against their law, their regulation, is being sanctioned. Mm -hmm. Very, very important. Mm -hmm. And the professionals too, we need to wrestle to this challenge. Let us uh, sensitize people so that they are so much concerned about the type of property they acquire, type where they build, so that it can help us in the future. And uh, also, individual, uh, let's be conscious of property is very, very important. And my advice also to the general public is let us patronize the professionals. They are there. Their charges are bearable if we approach them. Thank you. All right, patronize the professionals. And thank you so much, Mr. Uh, Yesbini uh, or Lagoke, for, for, for your insight on the show today. We appreciate your coming here. It's, it's my pleasure to be here. All right. All right. I forgot the other time to mention that uh, ESV. Ni Olaguke is the General Secretary of the Nigerian Institution of Estes of Years and Valor, and like I, right, like I rightly mentioned earlier, is also the Head of Practice of Ni Olaguke Consulting, a firm of Estes of Years and Valor right here in Lagos State. Thank you so much. That will be how far we can go on the show today. My name is Najib Ademi. Don't forget you can continue this conversation on our share media platforms at the Property Underscore Show on, on, uh, uh, on Instagram, on Facebook at the Property Underscore at the Property Show one. WhatsApp plus two three four eight zero three four one four two six um, one one. Don't forget, real estate practice is a serious business. Is a professional business. Is a serious business. I'll see you again same time, same station next week. Godwin. Bye for now.